Hello friends, today we will review pattern oriented software architecture. What is the difference between architectural patterns and design patterns? Hello everyone, my name is Vikas Kenny. I have more than 20 years of experience in IT industry. Do subscribe to my channel for your regular updates. This story. When this book came, I believe that was .NET technology has just come. It must be 2001 or 2002. I went to a party and I met a guy. He was a he was from the Java world. That time .NET was new. I was still working on Visual Basic. Visual Basic was more object based programming it was not fully object oriented programming so this java architect java i i asked this java guy what you do he said i am java architect what you do and i said i work on visual basic and the, the, at that time visual basic architecture and design was not that mature as compared to java world so this guy told me Oh, you're working on .NET technology. Very soon, you guys have to rewrite your code. Microsoft is gonna rewrite the operating system. That time we had Windows XP. He says Microsoft is coming with Windows Vista. And with that, all your applications will start working. You have to rewrite your application. And since I have read this book, and I knew the micro micro kernel architecture. Basically, the J JVM or .NET .NET uh, architecture is same. They are uh, you when you write your .NET code, you are write, you are writing against .NET CLR, which is an abstraction sits on the top of operating system. So as long you are using this .NET CLR abstraction, I can change the operating system and the code should continue to work because you are writing to the abstraction. I told him, I told him, I don't think we have to write the based on the .NET CLR. He was taken back. He did not expect a micro, a work, person working on Visual Basic to know about designs, architecture. Then he admitted that uh, .NET CLR is being ported on the Unix platform too. So, uh, very uh, in that was 2001 uh, .NET code will be if you are writing .NET code it won't be obsolete because of the new operating system or different operating system so coming back to this uh, pattern oriented software architecture review this there was a very big there was a very famous book called gang of four book design patterns so why we need this architecture patterns when we have design patterns most of the most of the software architectures which are working are based on some sound structural principles software architecture defines the fundamental structural organization schema for the subsystems of a system it it defines what kind of subsystems we are going to have what are their responsibilities and also software architecture patterns gives us rules and guidelines for interaction among these subsystems so the these uh, Software architecture patterns are the template for the real architecture. They define the structural properties of the system and how the subsystem are going to behave. So it's very, very important to pick up the right software architecture, architecture pattern. As somebody says, if you think software architecture is a expensive, try bad software architectures or try if you think somebody's nicely said if you think 
software architecture is expensive try bad software architecture so mbc is a very popular architecture patterns nowadays it is it is a form of interactive architecture patterns so why we needed a book on architecture pattern why while we have design patterns so design patterns define some problem for existing some systems or components of the system or relationships between them design patterns are generally medium design patterns doesn't have an impact on the software architecture but they do have impact how the software systems are interacting with the, with each other hello everyone today we will review pattern oriented software architecture also popularly known as posa book review so it has it has lot of patterns it divides patterns into different categories if you have no architecture pattern in your application which is called ball of mud is muddy so what are the architecture can help you the first one which very popular is layered most of us are using some layered architecture in layered architecture we generally we have presentation layer business layer data layer and accessing the database second architectural pattern in this category is pipes and filters a uh, lot like, lot of time microsoft's iss server uses pipes and filters architecture your request goes to lot of authentication authorization filters the third architecture it defines is blackboard architecture in blackboard when we don't know the architecture basically there could be multiple architecture evolving in, in this architecture the blackboard architecture more sounds like to me more as emerging architecture so the next is distributed system it uh, one popular architecture pattern is broker broker is responsible for sending your request to the servers now lot most of the framework microsoft's framework uh, like wcf or they hide all these uh, details from us uh, over the configuration which uh, server inter inter process and inter machine communication so it may not be that beneficial for that Ag again for interactive systems it defines the mvc nowadays mvc model view controller architecture is very very common and popular uh, most chances are everybody has used model view controller is model is the business object view is the presentation layer and controller is the subsystem which manipulates the model and decides which view to be be presented and finally there is a architecture is micro kernel architecture this is the architecture uh, which i was discussing with the java guy i have read this architecture i was able to correct him uh, bring him bring him to bring our discussion based on facts let me read what is the micro kernel arch uh, micro kernel architecture is the micro kernel architecture pattern applies to software systems that must be able to adapt to changing system requirements it separates a minimal functional core from extended functionality and customer specific parts the micro kernel also serves as a socket for plugging in these extensions and coordinating these collaborations then it talks about seven eight design patterns and i think there were nine design patterns um they looked very common or not that useful uh, i would rather read the gang of four design patterns and in the last they have some architectural definitions they have i may create another video based on those architecture definitions these are very nice definitions if you if you are going for some architecture interview you don't have time to read you you click want to cram some definition 
these definitions are a good cheat sheet so since it, this book has been uh, out for a long time and these lot of uh, patterns have become lot of architecture patterns have become very common i it's a good read if you have not re if you have not read any other architectural book if you want to start somewhere so it's a easy read you can start it from here so i will rate it as 3 out of 5 uh 3 out of 5 many design patterns provide the structure for decomposing complex services and components and other prescribes the communication between these components hello everyone my name is vikas kenny i have more than 20 years of experience in it industry do subscribe to my channel for your regular updates